Nigeria should restructure or dissolve. These are not my words, but the words of Professor Banji Akintoye. And the APC factions in River State are at it again. Well, it's time. This time, they have overplanned the Congresses. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. First is what the, it was the national confab, and now it's the call for restructuring. Well, Professor Banji Akintoye, in, words, in his words, uh, actually believe restructuring is absolutely necessary for the survival of Nigeria. Now, if Nigeria does not restructure itself, it will have to accept the dissolution of itself. Now, if we delay to restructure any much longer, then there may be no Nigeria to talk about. Those are not my words, by the way, but I'm being joined by Francis Chilaka, a political analyst. It's good to have you join us, Francis. Thank you, Marianne. I, I mean, it's interesting because um, uh, Professor Banja Kinte is the leader of the Yoruba World Congress Emeritus. He's the former head of Department of History in the University of Ife, now um, um, Bafemi Awolowo World University. Um, and he was granted an interview, and he talked about restructuring. Now, before I, I, I ask you a question, restructuring used to be a word we threw around just before the 2019 election, but all of a sudden, it's been put to rest. Now we're talking about banditry and xenophobia. It seems like we go in and out of these eras, but he's brought back the issue of restructuring. And I just took time to tell you what, a piece of what he said. What are your thoughts? Um, I think the thing is, it's, it's simple. Um, our leaders have always had this way of um, throwing things at us to keep us busy. Um, the whole idea about it is to make sure that the people do not come together. Um, let, us, let us not mince words. Let us not forget that those who have elected as leaders, they understand the fact that sovereignty belongs to the people. And you know, sometimes the best way to really get the people to do your bidding is applying divide and rule. Hmm. So I think that is what every successive government in Nigeria has been able to do. Once they see that the people are coming together, throw something at them, keep them busy, let them start talking. And before you know it, another four years will be gone. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, but this is what Nigeria has turned out to be. Well, um, Professor Banja Kinto is saying that um, he, he thinks that we have to address the issue of restructuring if not, then we have to dissolve what we call Nigeria. And we know how opposed a lot of Nigerians are to dissolving what we call Nigeria. So how do we deal with this issue of restructuring? Again, I remember before we got into 2019, even 2018, there was a time where the APC was asking what restructuring meant. And there were people on the other side of the divide asking for restructuring now. At some point, there was a committee that was set up to talk about restructuring, and that, went, that literally died with the elections. Is that really what we need right now? And, and if we talk about restructuring, what kind of restructuring does the Nigerian state need for it to stand? First of all, when we talk about restructuring, we need to understand that there's so much injustice in Nigeria. Injustice in terms of leadership, injustice in terms of those who would become leaders, injustice in terms of the people themselves. So this agitation will never go away. It will be there. So long as people feel that they are not being treated well in the entity called Nigeria. Um, it didn't start with the elections or before the elections. All along, if you, if you, if you really check well, um, IPOB, which has become proscribed, started with demanding for restructuring. In the sense that we need to understand who and who signed into Nigeria. Mm -hmm. What age? The likes of Zeke, Aolowo, all those who signed into what we, the contraption we have today as Nigeria, what age were they? Did they really understand what they were signing into? Today I started, you know, I started a, a funny post today and I said, it is time to end this whole thing about um, quota system. It is time for us as a country to say, 
let people get employed or get appointment based on what they're able to do. Not because I'm a politician, I have slots, so I can put anybody I want to occupy that slot. But if we end the quota system, then we have to put an end to the federal character. Exactly. We that, need to no, put that an is, end to, to, you know, that whole thing that we do with jam and we give certain, certain persons who do not all deserve All of that it. has to end. But, but, but you see, that means that we have to go back to the Constitution. And that is something that is very... Maria, it's Maria, a sensitive Maria, situation. Do you have, do, have you read the Nigerian Constitution? Of course I know. A lot of, a constitution a lot that, of us let me, let me say to the Constitution. No, a constitution but, that makes a governor unaccountable? Is that a constitution? A constitution that allows um, uh, a lawmaker to earn more than even a president? Is that a constitution? What are we really talking about in this country? So, but then again, I, keep, I always ask this, and I'm not in any way holding brief for politicians or whoever they are. If we decide today, as Nigerians, that we want a constitutional amendment or a re, uh, to rewrite our constitution or have a brand new constitution, where do we start? Who's going to do it? The National Assembly is going to have to spearhead it. But if they are beneficiaries of what we call a constitution today, what makes you think it's going to be easy for that to be pulled off? It comes back to what I keep saying, that the people, power belongs to the people. This agitation for restructuring is coming off and on, off and on. At the point in time, it will be difficult to throw it under the carpet. But how aware? Are the people that they are powerful? The people are beginning How to get away. Power do no, the, the people, people are, know that no. they own because being in the field and talking to Nigerians, even on a normal day, you talk to a cab driver or the average person you're buying something from in the market. It's more like we have decided to throw in the towel and we have decided to make a, a few number of people very powerful, and we see that we see them as the guys who can do what and undo. So we. You know, we resign to fate. So how do we, do we really know how much power that we wield as the people? The moment, the day we begin to understand that every man in Nigeria has one vote. Nobody has more than one vote. And we begin to look into the eyes of those who want to vie for office. Let us begin to think of voting people based on their credibility, not based on party. Not based on party. I'm telling you that Nigerians are becoming very aware. People are beginning to realize that the 5,000 naira you give to them just before the election is not worth it. But they're still taking it. it but, but then they still take it. If we they're realizing, we saw the elections, how they turned out. I mean, it's not, it's just not far off. It was March. And we're in, we're in what, September? We saw what happened during the election. We even saw that people didn't show up for the election. So if you have come to a realization, you're supposed to have a light bulb moment. You're supposed to begin to make a change of sorts. But staying back, I don't know if that's a point of realization. No, what, 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 see, look at it from, you see, when, people are, when, when somebody has been in a place for too long, you become very comfortable. And that has been the problem of Nigerians. They're sitting in their comfort zone. But I tell you, people are also beginning to wake up to say, no, we're tired of being in this comfort zone. I'll give you a typical example. A few weeks back, I was going to, to the east, and um, the construction company blocked the road. They've done some part of the road, and there's this heavy traffic. Common sense would have dictated to them to open up a passage for people to go through. And the next thing we saw was this government vehicle with siren blowing, and then they opened, immediately they opened it, they closed it back. And the people got down and said, no, if this car can pass through here, we will also pass through. The people, when the, the construction workers went and called upon, the policemen came, wielding their guns, and people said, no, we will pass through here. <laughs> and I saw Nigerians coming together to remove those, you know, these heavy blocks store, they use them blocking the, the roads. They removed it and cars passed. And in less than 30 minutes, the traffic was cleared. So when people are coming to that realization, it's gradual, but people are coming to that realization that, look, we have elected you. You are now more powerful than we are. We put you there to serve us and not you. 
I'm not, I'm not us to enslave ourselves to you. So it's going to get to that point. Now, the restructuring everybody's asking for is simple. Government needs to sit down and look at the wrongs that are going on in terms of appointments, in terms of infrastructural development, in terms of accountability. These are things everybody's asking for. And, and I'll say I'm, 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 I'm surprised you know, that suddenly the Yoruba World Congress, as they are called, is also demanding for restructuring. <laughs> Because unfortunately, what we have is anyone in power feels, oh, it's not affecting me. It's not affecting my people. So we're, we're, we're in power. So every other person can go to sleep. But I'm telling you, you know, I, I've, I've read through the interview, and I'm like, whoa. All of a sudden, a Yoruba man is coming out to say, we don't want Ruga. <clears throat> it sounds funny. When assume the leader, the national leader of APC, didn't see anything wrong with, with Ruga. The national leader of the APC is not a representative of the people, no. is he? He is. No, he's not. He is. Is he an elected representative it, of the people? It, it doesn't does work. Does he speak for the people? Who does he speak for himself? He speaks for the APC. He doesn't he speak, he speaks for the Yorubas. Does Yorubas. he speak for you in, who lives no, in no, Lagos? You know, he says he speaks for the Yorubas. I mean, on several locations. He says, does that translate to the fact that the people gave him the right to speak for them? Those are two things, speculations. No, yes. I, mean, I can say Nigeria that I, has always been, I can about Nigeria say, is, is so I can say that I speak for the ethics, but then they it, might it, hold it, a different idea about Ruga or whatever it is that I want to speak. I think that I speak for them for, and they have a right to say no. You don't speak for us because you are one person, like you said, one person, one vote. Yeah, but but I'm, what I'm saying is that all the times he has spoken. I haven't seen anybody come out to say no. Everybody has lied low. Well, there was a time where the 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 um I think the uh, the about of um, no 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 the only of Ife spoke up about this situation of Ruga telling the people to guard their land. So again, if an APC leader, don't forget he's a politician does not necessarily mean that he speaks for the Europe of people. And there are several people in the Southwest who have said no to Ruga. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm happy that um, they have a new leader, in quotes, because he's now the Yoruba leader, so they call him. And he's speaking. Out. And then, it, like I keep saying, it brings us back to why IPOB was proscribed in the first place. It's all about this whole thing about restructuring this country. Some people are feeling really, really marginalized. And I will say this to Mr. You know, Mr. President. There are a lot of things he's doing that shows that he's you know, taking sides with one side of the divide, which is totally, totally wrong. I, I saw the list of roads being approved recently. It's, it's annoying. It's really, really annoying. In a country of 100 and something million, and you want to do roads, and the roads are, faced, are focused on one section of the country. I mean, it, I mean I, I, sometimes I keep asking myself, is it that Mr. President is doing this whole thing just to test the will of the people? Or he is doing it because he feels, OK, I am there as the president. You know, I'm from social ethnic group. So let what everybody, you can do what you want to do. So these are the things that are making people call for restructuring. Yeah. Um, if we think the president is doing according to you, things to favor a certain part of the country, the parts of the country that feel aggrieved, how are we speaking up about it? What are we doing about it? Because you said that if we are tired, we will speak up. We will ask for a change. Maybe we're not tired. No, see, maybe we don't feel, <laughs> maybe we're not offended. No, maybe, maybe we don't maybe, see it the way you no, no, see it. No, 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 let me tell you the truth. Or maybe um, we're not, we don't think we're ready or right no, we for are, instruction. We are getting to that point where the people would wake up one day and say, this country has to, today, be structured. I've heard this for about no, no, let me tell years. You. You think what that we, let maybe me, when we're tired, no, so, so you, you may see, not be tired in unfortunately, 50 years. Unfortunately, we keep having people who we're electing to power and all they think is about themselves. They don't think about the people. And like I keep telling you, I'm not a violent person, but I'll tell you this. I've said it on different fora. I love what happened in Germany to distinguished senator. I love it for one reason. It's, it's, it, it, it simply tells him to tell the story of what the people want. And I think that is, a good, that is where we should start from. And it's going to continue from there. 
cannot be a governor owing salaries 36 months, 38 months, and you're still coming out to campaign. And your party is standing behind you. That is the height of mediocrity. And I ask, in all of this, where are the people? Let's go back to the professor, uh, Akintoye. He was asked what his view on restructuring is and if he has changed. And he said, restructuring is absolutely necessary for the survival of Nigeria. If Nigeria does not restructure itself, it will have to accept the dissolution of itself. If we delay to restructure any much longer, then there may not be a Nigeria to talk about. This is his position. Mm -hmm. But you and I live in this Nigeria. Yeah. And we talk about body language, which I really don't go by. But do we seem like a people who are ready for a restructure? Do we seem like a people who are tired and we're asking for good governance? Do we? The last time I heard somebody ask for that, he ended up in, uh, behind bars. It depends on how you ask for it. Mm -hmm. You do not ask for good governance by violence. It has, violence has never achieved much. It has never achieved anything. But you can ask for good governance. Are we asking for People good People are beginning government? to ask. In what ways? In different ways. In different ways. I, like Go to, to the social media. I tell you, these governors and Mr. President, everybody's on social media. So they know that people are beginning to ask questions. People are beginning to ask questions. Most people on Twitter, when it comes to coming out to sit in those town hall meetings or ask questions or even cast their votes, they know where to be found. So why would they take those people seriously? Well, they're beginning to take them seriously because... Now, now let me tell you. You see, I've always said to you, I said, the problem we have is people... Our, our level of voters' education in Nigeria is, is zero. We wait for a month, two months to the election. Here we go. Anyway, on the chopping board now. And we start talking about elections. We start talking about this. But I, I'm telling you, now is the time. And I'm happy a lot of CSOs are doing that already. Because now is the time to educate the people. And I've been advocating. Even if we're talking about still looking at this constitution we have, we need to begin to teach it in schools. I put up a post the other day, and I know how people have come after me. I said to them, I said, if Nigeria is where you ask somebody, if Nigeria goes abroad, I ask him, where are you from? He doesn't say I'm a Nigerian. He says I'm an Igbo man. It is wrong. I totally do not agree with that. I've never thought about it yes. that way. I've never we need to that. remove this whole thing about state of origin. That is where the restructuring has to start from. We need to start using state of residence so that if I'm born in Lagos, if I live in Lagos for 10 years, 15 years, I should be able to contest. I should not be seen as somebody from the East. I but should be the, seen as a Nigerian. But the Constitution, the Constitution allows, it clearly states that if you've lived in a place and done business for about 10 years, you are eligible to run for office in that place. And the same form you feel as your state of origin. Is that not a contradiction on itself? So sometimes I ask myself, what do all these so-called representatives do? What do they do? They just sit down, collect salaries, and go home at the end of the month? They should be thinking of innovative ways. The world has moved on. And if they're not thinking, what should we, the ones who expect them to be serving us, do? That's why people are beginning to ask questions. How many people even know the people who are serving or leading them or representing them? How many people know where to go with petitions? How many people go to those constituency offices to ask questions? Because most of them don't even have. It's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate that we have a system that does not allow those you have elected to be part of you. You only get to see them before the elections, they start to fry Accra, they start to roast yam, they start to roast corn in the market. Some of them even go as far as feeding babies. Some go and lie down in the hospital as if they are sick. Just because they want to get the people's foot. But people, but if are, we not, are, but people smart, are not beginning to But ask. if we are smart, would we not know that these are theatrics to get our attention? I mean, we've seen this happen that, every election cycle. And yet, we still seem not to 
have understood that these are all pranks to get votes to I mean so are we really ever going to get to that point where we really say if you're not going to give us good governance then get out the door we will when we will and it's going to draw closer than you actually think it is drawing closer I know that a lot of people are out there educating people now, market women, you know, teaching them what they should know, their rights. Things would get better if Nigerians know their rights. It's unfortunate that our educational system is so, so, so laid back. Well, well, well the, the professor here says that he was asked if the Southeast had overtaken the Southwest in the area of educational development, and this was his response. He said, this is not true. The Southeast has not overtaken us. The cumulative effect of our earlier start in education will for a long time put the Southwest ahead of any part of Africa, not only Nigeria. And he talked about the educational standard, which you have just mentioned, has gone down all over Nigeria. He says that that is what the people controlling government at the center want. So he's saying that this is a deliberate attempt by those in power to keep us uneducated or keep the education level low. Uh, in the midst of their efforts to devalue education, some may be claiming to have overtaken the Southwest. I'd like to hear you. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, go into a debate of which, um, I, I don't want to go into regions or ethnicity, no. I, I, I want to speak as a Nigerian. And I want to say that the educational system in Nigeria as a whole has been rubbished. A system where you have private schools, no regulation. Everybody is opening a school. And the, the, the effect of that is that public schools are all dead. Meanwhile, don't forget, most of these people in government today are beneficiaries of public schools. They can't deny that fact. We hear this all the time. Yes, it's the truth. So. The government needs to, we, 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 and the people need to begin to say, look, let us bring back our public schools. When you bring back public schools, it allows people to be educated. It will reduce the menace of area boys, drop out in school, banditry and all of that. That is one good way to curb this whole thing, education. I'll, I'll give you a typical example. When, when Fashola became governor, and you know, Lagos was in the heat of uh, area boyism, so to say, area boys were everywhere. And he said, he said, you don't need to fight them. And what did he do? He started taking care of places where they stay, the dark places, started putting light. And all of a sudden, area boys vanished and disappeared from Lagos. Today we are seeing them back because after him, Ambode wasn't bothered. Maybe to a large extent, as they say, they helped him to come to power. But you see, when you take certain steps, that's why I said it is not about being violent. No. It's pragmatic. Okay. Applying wisdom. Okay. So I think that we need to sit down and say, we need wisdom to address this whole issue. Let us begin to create avenue for people to be educated. All right, avenues for people to be educated and their restructuring probably has to be um, asked for through good governance. Hopefully one day we will get to that to Huru. I want to say thank you to Francis Chilaka, a political analyst. He's not going anywhere. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be discussing the APC factions in River State. Yes, they're at it again. And uh, we'll be finding out why they just can't work together. Stay with us. We'll be right back.